What is happening, my peeps, and welcome back to the channel. I've got just one question to ask you guys before we get started. Did you miss me? Did you really, really, really miss me? That's all right. I didn't miss you guys that much either. Be that as it may, here we are back together again for another video, which hopefully will be the final and best installment of the Rehouse Extravaganza 2024. Without too much more blabbing, let's get into the first animal that we need to move tonight. And I just wanted to go ahead and warn you guys ahead of time, get ready for some color. So here we go. This is not a tarantula. This is not even an arachnid. But it is a very creepy crawly in its own right. This is the one and only centipede that I keep in my collection, the Scolopendra Malaysian Jewel. I'm going to take this piece of bark out of the way and then you will get a good look at this beautiful animal. And the reason we are rehousing it is because the height of the enclosure is a bit too short for it. If it wanted to right now, it could use the majority of its body to go up the side of this enclosure and come out. It's already happened once, so that's why we're rehousing. Absolutely stunning animal. They're awesome to watch when they feed. I keep all kinds of tarantulas, true spiders, jumping spiders, scorpions, praying mantids. This is the only animal that I keep that really gives me the creeps. I have the enclosure made up for this one. I just wanted you guys to get a look at it. But before we do that, I'm just going to do a little bonus thing. I'm going to do a, uh, an experiment with this piece of cork bark. I believe there are some critters in there. I see one right there. Then we're going to get on camera really quick and then we'll get this thing in a new home before it starts going crazy. All right, so just a brief synopsis. Within the last year, I tried to do a little bit more bioactive stuff. Um, not so much as far as the plants go because, you know, finances and everything, but cleaning crew and stuff. I've been using springtails for a while, so I decided to dip my toe into the isopods. And so I got some dairy cow isopods, I put them in a bioactive enclosure, and they reproduced like crazy, and ate up all the bioactive stuff, and long story short, I had to thin their numbers out, but I bought a few other species, and I did not remember putting any in the centipede enclosure, but when I rehoused the centipede, I did put some pretty exciting isopods in there, and... I didn't even think there was any more alive and I actually had a tub that I was trying to keep a colony in and they all died off. This is the lava isopod, Porcella something or other. I didn't do my research before I did the video so I apologize but you can see there are quite a few of them in that piece of rotting wood. I think I will put part of those in the centipede enclosure for a cleaning crew, but I'm going to take the other part and put in a tub and see if I can't reestablish a colony of these guys because they're absolutely stunning little uh, critters. And you could have, you probably noticed as well when I was breaking the uh, bark apart, and you'll notice again in the rehouse I'm about to do that the springtails have been doing quite well in this centipede enclosure. All right, so here we go. We have the current enclosure inside the future enclosure. That's a safety measure because the centipedes are crazy fast and they can be crazy, crazy. So I'm going to try to give you guys a little bit of a look at this thing before I tickle it over into its new enclosure. And you may notice springtails running around everywhere. The springtails have done quite well in this enclosure, so that's a good thing. If you see little white critters like that, do not freak out. They're not um, mites or any other troublesome parasites. So now what we're going to try to do... I'm going to pause this because I forgot my little poker, and then we'll come back. I'm going to poke this thing in its new house. All right, y'all, I apologize about that. I think some of that video might have switched over to vertical for a second, just um, depending on the angle of the camera. If it did, I apologize. Again, keep in mind, I am working by myself and very little um, editing experience. So, you know, I do the best I can and I, 
really. Like, everything happens as it happens when it happens, you know. And there's no doctoring anything. It's all straight up natural and raw video. So there we go. My Scolopendra Species Malaysian Jewel is in its new home. We've got some more color to check out. So let's do that right now, guys. And for those of you that were worried about places for the centipede to hide, I did put a cork bark in there after I rehoused it. I just left the cork bark out as I put the centipede in. That way you guys could get a good look at it. But in my experience in keeping any centipedes, I've kept them in deep substrate and they burrowed a little bit, but not too much. As long as you've got a good central point for them to hide under, then you're fine. Uh, you'll notice there's no water dish in here. I have not witnessed my uh, centipedes drinking from a water dish, but a good mist once a week, and they'll slurp it up off of whatever the water is on. So just a quick little care tip for those that might want to get into centipedes. I'll stop yapping now. Let's move along because we got a lot of good shit to come. All right, y'all. So some of you may remember from the first part of the rehousing video where we disturbed a tarantula spider link that was molting and we set it aside. The good news is it did make it through the molt and we're still going to continue with the uh, rehouse. And again, some of you may remember that this was the Heteroscota maculata or the HMAC. And then since it molted, this thing has been quite busy webbing. Um, they are notorious for being spicy. This one is still quite young, so I haven't experienced that yet. Uh, against my better judgment, I'm going to try to maybe flush it from this enclosure, which I don't know if... That was even on camera. If it wasn't, I apologize. Because again, working alone. Yet hopefully, I'm going to flush it from one enclosure to the next. And it will have plenty of room to molt. Now, I hear that these are quite a large arboreal tarantula. And again, they have notoriety. They're kind of like a uh, arboreal OBT. You know, they have a bad rep for being quite pissy and defensive, so we'll see how it goes. I'll give you updates as that goes along, but there it goes. As you can see, it's not defensive. It is shy. We've got that one moved out of the way. Now let's get back all the cool stuff. All right, y'all. So from here on out, we've got nothing but flashes of color for you guys. I hope you're really excited and you're super pumped to see some colors because that's what we're about to see. We're starting with this girl right here. Fortunately, turned out a girl. This is my Afonopelma Morier. They are still very, very rare in the hobby. This is the Mexican Jade Fuego. It looks like a GBB and a uh, curly hair had a baby. Super awesome species. Um, I actually had two of these. One of them... The first one that I had, I made mistakes. I drilled the ventilation holes too big and it got out. And I believe that baby got eaten by my Harpactera pulchropes female, Phoebe, who everybody should know at this point. I believe she ate it, but I'm not going to blame her for it. And they're both gone now. And um, hopefully they're in a better place. This guy, as you, girl, excuse me, as you can see, needs a better house. And hopefully we can get a better look at her and really get a good idea of her beauty as we move her around. So let me get her new enclosure and let's move her. All right, y'all, here we go. This gal actually hasn't been messed with in quite a while, but she's always been quite chill. I'm trying to figure out the best way to kind of drop her into this enclosure. I still haven't quite figured it out yet. I want you guys to be able to see this. But I may have to transfer her into a catch bottle and then put her in there. So please be patient, guys. Hold on. All right. So here we go. We have transferred her to a catch bottle or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to get her out of there. Hopefully we can get some good looks at her because this is an absolutely stunning species. 
and in my opinion at this point is one of if not the most valuable female besides um another one we hope is a female that's going to get rehoused later on i really really love this girl she has been very very tolerant and patient um until i try to video her and of course now she doesn't want to go that way so let's try to make her go the other way one thing you always going to want to remember as a keeper is never force your animal to do anything because at some point they'll decide to do what you want them to do upon their terms just remember that never forget it we've got some more tarantulas and other colorful creatures to move so let's just get to it shall we